Hi everyone, let's talk about risk today. So I've seen many people on social media mentioning they fail to see why people would risk having complications from taking the COVID vaccines when the mortality rate for COVID is as low as 0.2%. I've also received comments on my channels and videos saying the negatives of the COVID vaccine outweigh the positives. Is that so? Let's take a look. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Hong. I'm a pharmaceutical scientist and teach full time at a U.S. pharmacy school. The goal for my channel here is to provide scientific facts for everyone, so that you know what is true and what is a myth. One of the biggest headlines this week on vaccine risk is the potential links to myocarditis. Now, myo means muscle, and carditis means the inflammation of the heart. So the condition means inflammation of the heart muscle. As let's look at Israel. Now, in Israel, five million people have fully vaccinated, and there were 62 cases of myocarditis, mostly after the second dose. This condition mostly seen in men under 30 years old, and two people have died: a 22-year-old woman and a 35-year-old man. The cases of myocarditis are at 0.001 percent, or one in every hundred thousand. Now, if you factor in the gender and the age, it increases the risk to one in every twenty thousand for sixteen to thirty-year-old men. And here in the U.S., we have some reports from the military. The Department of Defense is tracking fourteen cases of myocarditis after receiving either the Pfizer or the Moderna mRNA vaccine. Now, three cases for Pfizer and eleven cases for Moderna. One case developed after the first dose, but that person had a prior COVID infection three months ago, and 13 cases developed after the second dose. So it looked like there is a immunological development involved in the myocarditis. There are more than 2.7 million military personnel have already received the COVID vaccine, so the rate of myocarditis is less than actually 0.00052 percent, and that is a very very low risk number. And in comparison to the risk of GI bleeding from taking baby or low dose aspirin for heart protection. Protection is actually about 0.48 to 3.64 cases per 1,000 person years. So the actually the risk is higher than developing myocarditis when you're looking at the vaccines. Now let's look, take a look at the bigger population data from the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System launched by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or the HHS. Now, as of the end of April 2021, there were 45 reports of myocarditis after the COVID vaccine, and mostly are associated. With the second dose, and there were 19 cases reported after Pfizer vaccine, and 26 cases after the Moderna vaccines, and 62 percent of the reported cases were men between the age of 20 to 45 years old. As of mid-May, the CDC is also monitoring few reports of myocarditis that were also observed in more male adolescents and young adults. So, based on the number, it looks like young men have a very low risk of developing myocarditis after receiving the mRNA vaccines. And I previously talked about how the risks are associated with developing blood clots. When young women are taking both the AstraZeneca 
or the Johnson and Johnson vaccines. So based on these numbers, it looks like the adenoviral vector vaccine seems to be more a little bit better for young men, and the mRNA vaccines seems to be better for young women. If you make it this far into the video, that means you probably like my content. So please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button. This video needs your help to reach more people. And now let's look at what happened to a young people when they contract and recover from COVID. The lingering effect of COVID are commonly known as long COVID. Now, in one of the largest studies just published in the journal Nature in April, they look at the health outcome in more than 73,000 people who had COVID and were not hospitalized, and versus 5 million veteran user who did not have COVID and were not hospitalized. And based on their result, after six months of having COVID, people were at a higher risk of new diagnosis of heart diseases, diabetes, kidney disease, mental health disorders, such as anxiety, depressions, and substance use disorders. And so many people may argue COVID is just a worse case of flu. Is it? Now the author also looked at more than 13,000 people who had been hospitalized with COVID-19 and compared them with about 14,000 people who had been hospitalized with influenza. Now the COVID-19 survivors who had been hospitalized had an increased risk and severity of post-infection lung problems and other disorders. So many people believe COVID is not that of a big deal because the death rate is relatively low and the vaccines are not providing enough benefit. But based on the data that we have collected so far, the consequences of even a mild to moderate case of COVID is not good and it can lead to many systemic disorders and these risks are actually higher than those uh, other risks that are associated with both the mRNA vaccines and the adenoviral vector vaccines. So lastly, if you agree or disagree with my content here in the video, please leave me a comment and I will discuss that with you in the wordings there. And meanwhile, please continue to stay safe and healthy and I'll see you again next Sunday. Bye.